exercise four. In today's exercise, we'll look at several different things. First of all, we'll make a couple revolve features. We'll also make something called a sweep, which is somewhat of a free form type of geometry that uses a profile and path. Uh, we'll also look at the hole wizard and just some uh, patterning functionality inside SOLIDWORKS. Uh, as you can see up on the screen, that's the actual part we're going to be building. And so let's begin. Go to File, New, Part. Again, as usual, make sure Tools and Options are set up for ANSI, and the units should be inch, pound, second, IPS, one, two, three, decimal places. We, we begin by selecting the front plane, go to the Quick Launch Sketch, and we'll draw a profile. You could actually use a rectangle. Let's see, use a rectangle instead. And at the origin, find yourself there and click and drag out a rectangle. About uh, two by three is fine on that area. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, add some dimensions here. So I'm going to go to Smart Dimension and dimension the vertical line off of the origin. And that's going to be three inches high. All right. Now, one other thing that we're going to need here is we're going to need a center line. So go to your line tool and hit the little arrow to the right of it, find center line, and right at the origin, drag out a nice vertical center line that goes beyond your boundary of your box, and then hit escape. And <clears throat> you'll see that this edge is flowing. You can move it pretty much anywhere you'd like. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a, a, a radius, an arc, onto this. So if we go over here, we could find a couple different types of arcs. The one we're looking for is called three-point arc. I don't think we've ever used this yet for one of, any of our exercises, so select that. And glide up somewhere on the edge of the part and click and drag up. Now release it. And then you'll see you have a temporary arc showing there, like a dashed entity. What you do is you take your pointer, get on that arc, and click and hold it, and now you find you can drag it in or out. Now be careful. You don't want A to equal anything more than 100. Uh, it should be less than 180 degrees. So maybe like 130 or 140 is pretty good. And then let's add some dimensions to that. It's going to be 0.5. Okay, one other thing we're going to do is um, you could go ahead and use the chamfer tool. The chamfer tool is under the sketched fillets. This is a sketch chamfer, so we hit the little arrow to the right of it and find sketch chamfer. And the, we'll actually make it uh, angle to distance. The angle will be 45 degrees, and 0.25 will be the uh, distance. And then select the corner. Now, if for some reason your arc is intersecting, um, that might be a little tricky for you. You could hit undo and maybe drag the arc down just like this. Um, if you can, actually maybe have to do it from the center point. There we go. Okay. And then maybe add your chamfer. Okay. We also want to uh, trim out this line. So we could go to the Trim Entities tool here. Feel free to use Power Trim or Trim to Closest. I'll use Power Trim and just cut through there. In the center. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some uh, additional geometry here. Uh, actually, we're, we're done with the geometry so much as we just need to add some dimensions. The first dimension we'll add is this line right here to the center line. Now, don't click on the center line down here. Uh, you won't get the same effect. We want to actually create a diameter dimension. And by selecting the center line up here, where we could actually make sure we're selecting it, um, right now if we see our dimension that appears is um, would, would theoretically be a radius once this is fully revolved. But if you move it to the right of the center line, you'll get what will be a diameter. It's actually dimension to nothing on the other side. So click and type in two. Okay. The next thing we want to dimension is uh, we'll dimension from the center point of this arc to the bottom edge and that's going to be 1.75 
And finally, we need to dimension to the outer quadrant of this arc to the center line. Now here's the trick. Select near the outer quadrant and then select the center line. Now if you know if you move to the far right, you'll actually get the dimension here, um, which is dimension to center points. That's fine. Just go ahead and click to drop that dimension, whatever it might be. Don't bother changing it yet. Hit the green check mark. Now, technically what you should be able to do here is grab this point and drag it out, but don't try that on this one. I've already tried it and it um, uh, doesn't seem to work very well. So instead, do this. Right, not left, but right mouse button click on the dimension and go to, um, actually, I'm sorry, it opens up on the left. As soon as you click on it, left or right on the dimension, this op appears on the left hand side. And you'll see if you, there's a leaders tab up here. Click on the leaders tab. And on here you'll find center, min, or mac for first arc condition. You want max. Go ahead and select max and you'll see it dimensions now to the quadrant. So that's how you could switch it. Now minimum would actually dimension to the outside of the inside of this arc if it were continuous. But um, let's make sure it's set to max. Hit the apply button. And now double click on the dimension and type in the 2.5 inch dimension. Okay, everything is fully defined. We can see the geometry is black. We're good to go ahead and revolve this now. So go to features and five, re find revolve boss base. And just hit apply. The next thing we have to do is we have to add a spoke coming out of here because this is going to be like a steering wheel. So let's go ahead and select the front plane again and go to quick launch. The next step is we go ahead and we select this front plane. We start our sketch on it and let's go normal to and zoom out a little bit. Give yourself some room to the left here and proceed to take the line tool move your pointer over the surface of your model so it's centered and you get a little inference line that appears right below your pointer and should infer to the origin. At that point click and drag out a line about two inches. Now go over here to tangent arc and click on there and draw a tangent arc and make it a little less than 90 degrees. So A should equal maybe 80 to 85 or something like that. Now off of that, draw another one and drag it out in this direction. And then take your line tool and off of that, follow the tangency yellow dashed line to indicate you're locking in tangent. And then hit escape. Now select that line and make it horizontal. And so everything should have a tangent relationship. If you click on all these, you'll see little green boxes to indicate tangency, tangency, and tangency. Make sure that there's tangency, otherwise it might not work very well. So let's go to Smart Dimension now. Dimension this line first at 2 inches long. Dimension one of the arcs at 1 inch. And we could use our little trick again. If you hit Escape, you could now hold Control and select both arcs. And over to the left here, you'll see equal. Make those equal. And then finally, dimension from this end to this end. Drag it straight up, and that will be four. Uh, actually, let me just undo that. That is supposed to be four, but let's get some of these other dimensions in here. There's one more dimension that we need, which is 1.75 and one inch. So two dimensions actually. So from here to here, make that one inch. And then from this line to the bottom, make that 1.75. And one other relationship that you should add. See that this could be moved left and right? Hold, select that and then hold control and select the origin. Make sure that those are coincident. Oh, and I uh, made a mistake there. It actually should not be coincident. Let's undo that. Or right click and hit delete in the red error. And that should actually be vertical. 
my mistake. And then make sure that you make this four inches from end to end. And it should be fully defined now. Hit the rebuild button. And now go to reference geometry and plane and we're going to create a new plane. This is another technique. Just select the endpoint of this curve and then select the line that it's attached to, this short little line right here. Uh, you can select this arc. You can't select this arc, but you can select, uh, I think, basically just this line. You get different effects. If we click on that, you'll see it's building a plane perpendicular to that curve. But if we select this, we get something similar. If we select this, we get a different angle. And this, we get a completely different angle, too. So make sure it's this line. And hit the green check mark. Now select that plane, start your sketch, draw a box using the rectangle tool, select the top line of it, and hit the delete key after you hit escape a couple times. And now you just take the tangent arc tool and draw an arc over the top. Go to smart dimensions, dimension the bottom line, and this will be 0.5 for the width, and then dimension from the bottom line to the top of the arc. And just leave that blank, or just whatever's in there, and hit the green check mark. And now here's the trick. Grab the little blue dot there and drag it to the top of the arc. Let's try that again. I'm going to hit escape here. Click on the dimension, grab the blue dot, and drag it up. Okay, normally this works pretty well. I'm not certain why. Maybe it's because it's the angle I'm sitting at. I'm not able to do it. But we know how to fix that. What you do is you select the dimension and go to leaders over here on the left and just select max for the first arc condition. And then set it to 0.75. Hit apply. And now you're ready to just bring this over. So grab the center point, drag it to the origin, the red origin here, and release it. It should turn black. If it doesn't turn black, drag it far away and drag it back again. And now we have our profile. Next thing we're going to do is create a sweep. Before we do that, make sure you hit the rebuild button to exit the sketch or else it will not show up. So hit rebuild up here at the top. Now go to sweep. And the first thing we need to select is the profile. The next thing is the path. And you should get a preview that looks like this. It will merge automatically with the body. Just hit the apply button. And now we'll add some fillets at the bottom. Go to fillet and add some uh, 0.25 radius arcs on the bottom edges. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I think those are 188.188. Add one more fillet at 0.25 on the top edge here. So you can hide the plane, just right click on it and select hide. If you don't hide it, you might run into some issues a little later. And now we're ready to create our circular pattern. For the circular pattern, we go to, it says linear pattern, hit the little arrow down below it, select circular pattern. The pattern axis can be an edge or a center line. In this case, we can select the bottom edge. The features to pattern will be the spoke and the fillets. Make sure you select the fillets. If you can't select them from the surface, You'll see over here in the top left corner, hit this little plus symbol, and you could select them from the feature tree. That pulls over the view. Now select three places. Equal spacing should be activated. And hit apply. Okay, the next thing is select the front plane once again, start your sketch, and go normal too. What we're going to add here is we're going to select the circle tool and find the midpoint. Drag it out, the midpoint of this edge, and drag out a circle and dimension it at one inch. You will not need the dimensions as shown in the manual unless you left your plane up that I mentioned you should take off or hide. If you left your plane, you will not be able to find the midpoint most likely, and thus you'll be uh, having to use the dimension that's given to you in the book to constrain it. 
To add that dimension would overdefine this because this is locked into a midpoint. The relationship is in control here, not the dimension. So if I were to try and add a dimension like the book shows, it would give me an overdefined. Uh, in this case, actually, it didn't even warn me. It just went ahead and made it a gray dimension, which if I tried to double click on it, it would say the dimension is driven. Its value cannot be changed. So I'm just going to delete that. It's not necessary. One last item. Select the center line tool up at the top here. Glide up to the origin and drag out a vertical center line. And now you could go to Features, Revolve Boss Space, and hit the Apply button. The next step is we're going to learn how to use, uh, actually, we're going to put fillets on. Use the fillet tool, 0.25, and you could select each individual edge, or what's easier, select the whole surface it will fill it everything automatically. There's a benefit to that. In the event that we ever change the number of spokes, we don't have to go in and fill it each and every spoke. Versus here, you select the whole face, everything gets filleted no matter what updates come down the road. So for design intent purposes, the face in this case was advantageous. Now we're going to learn about the whole wizard. The whole wizard is a tool or toolbox inside SOLIDWORKS that enables you to bring up um, several libraries of different types of holes. Let's go ahead and select it. Once here, basically you could select from the type of hole you want. You'll see that there's counter bores, counter sinks, standard holes, uh, pipe taps, and customized holes. So if you make specialized ones, you could save them in the legacy hole area here. Um, I'm just going to use the counter bore. And as we glide down here, you could select what type of bolt head you would want and things like that. Um, that would be if in the event you're working in assemblies, you could actually have it automatically put in the bolt for you. Uh, in this case, it's not going to work because we're working in part files. But here we could select the size hole we'd like. I'll select the 5 eighths. We could select the end condition. Do we want to go through all or blind? So at a specific depth, maybe 1.1 1 1 inches. Sounds pretty good to me right now. And you could uh, change any additional items that you might need to. Now to position it, there's a position tab. Click on the position tab. And now it says use the dimensions and other sketch tools to position the hole to the center. So what you can do here is, um, certainly it doesn't always work very well trying to center it here. Let's try it. No, it doesn't, doesn't like it. OK, so click over here, just off to the side. And then right click when you're out in the open here and you'll find the select option. This takes you out of the sketch tool that it puts you in for putting points in. And now you could grab that and just drag it to the origin there. And if you want additional holes, you could go back and find the point tool right here. Click for additional places you might want additional holes. And voila. So I'm going to delete those though. I got stuck here a little bit. Let's see what it does. There it goes. Okay. It was just a visual interpretation that was wrong. Okay, and there's my counter bore. One last thing, the dome feature. If you wanted to make this is let's say this is for a child's toy, you want to make like something that looks like a ball on the top, you could select the top face, go to insert features, and you'll find dome. By selecting dome, you could go ahead and Increase this just by dragging this little bar up or down, and it will create a ball-like structure or dome on the top. There's two types. There's elliptical, and then there's a standard. Hit Apply, and you've just added a dome. And that concludes this exercise.